Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will explain how RSA can be used to digitally sign a message. Let's assume the message itself is not confidential. So assume M could be publicly available data, maybe your source code available as open source, for example. You want to sign the, the message so that any, anybody who is consuming your message can check whether uh, the message actually comes from you. Okay, that's the idea of digital signature. So there are two steps here. One is called signing, another is called verification. So I'll explain the sign and verification now. Uh, I'm going to assume how, you know how public key crypto system actually works at a very high level. Public key is public to the world, private key is private. Of course, public and private key are connected mathematically. And in order to sign, you would need private key. In order to verify, you would need the public key of signer or whosoever signs the message. You only need their public key, okay? So let's assume in our case, Bob wants to send a message M. M itself is not a secret. And Alice needs to confirm that the message is actually coming from Bob. How can we achieve that? It turned out that we can use RSA function that we have been talking about to achieve this goal. So first step is of course, Bob generates his public private key pass, right? And um, he publishes the public key. Assume Bob's public key is known to the world, okay, and vetted. And now Bob is going to generate a message. He, let's assume it's a random message for demo purpose. And he's going to generate a random message from the group. And then he's going to sign it, um, message yam, and then his private key and his public modulus, okay? So let's look at sign function. What is sign function doing? Sign function takes the message and the signer's uh, private key and the signer's public modulus. It's simply calling the RSA decryption function. So I will just write it here. Uh, yes, it's a signature that you get out. Uh, it's nothing but M power D mod N. Okay, D is the signer's private key. Okay, this is what the signer is going to send publicly to the verifier. So the verifier is now getting two things. One is the signature. This is the signature public. And I assumed M is not confidential. So a verification function is going to check whether um, the signature message pair is actually valid, okay? Meaning it will go ahead and encrypt the, the signature. So when we say encrypt the signature, what we mean is, let me, let me write it here. We're doing S power E mod N, right? S power E mod N. But what is yes? Yes itself is uh, M power D, right? So uh, because E and D are mathematically related and they are inverse of each other, this is nothing but M power E D which is nothing but uh, M in mod N, just nothing but M in mod N. If uh, nobody tampered S or M, um, this part will return M and we can check whether it is equal to the M. So that's how verification works. All right, let me now show you the, the steps involved here. So Bob sends the si signature and the message in clear text to Alice. So Alice is now going to call the verification function passing the signature, public exponent E, public modulus of Bob. These two are publicly known. Uh, this is Bob's data, okay? And uh, of course, Bob also sent M in clear text, so uh, Alice can verify whether verification is successful or not. If it is not successful, she knows for sure something is wrong. Let me show you why. Let's say somebody tampered the message. Let's say I just changed the message by incrementing the value one, right? Hopefully now uh, the program will crash meaning a such statement will fail. For demo purpose, I'm just going to use a 512 bit RSA key. You should not be using it. You should be using at least 2048 or whatever better. Uh, so this is the signature and this is a message. I thought I had, uh, hmm. oh, I didn't put an assert statement. <laughs> I should have put an assert here. Now it should fail because I, Eve is tampering with the message. So we let Eve, Eve tamper the message M, okay that now from and I'm just going to do a simple small modulus 512 bit number as you can see now assertion failed uh, that's because somebody tampered the message okay let's go back and clear that and tamper the signature now okay instead of tampering the message let's tamper the signature okay now the assertion should still fail yeah it failed okay so as you can see the RSA functions, uh, the function that we have been talking about, M power E mod N or uh, 
ciphertext power d mod n those two functions are extremely useful for digital signature we can sign and we can verify okay to sign you use the signer's private key to verify you use the signer's public key okay that's all okay so uh, the way i explained is not used in practice as it is one is that um, the message m must be smaller than the rsa modulus otherwise you can't sign so you have to apply hash function later i will show you how you can apply hash function first to to reduce the size of the message and then sign it the next even more serious one is that without having the private key you can actually generate a signature message pair let me show you how let's say i randomly pick a number s right and i compute um s power e mod n and i call that as m okay so this is yes is some random number okay and i i claim that the pair s comma m will pass the verification when the verifier verifies what is he going to do he's going to take my signature yes and raise it to power e right what is he going to get he's going to get m which is same as the m i send so you can see here i produce successfully a signature message pair without having the private key d okay 